Assalamu alaikum and welcome to this video tutorial on JavaScript. Today we are going to cover decision constructors and functions in JavaScript. In addition, we will be covering some more topics like scope in JavaScript and difference between where and let keywords. I am Muhammad Iqbal Bhatt. Let us start. We are again in Visual Studio Code. In order to start programming for today's tutorial, let us create another folder inside our JavaScript exercises folder and call it Decisions. Inside this Decisions folder, we will create a file and name it index.html. This is a blank HTML file, so first we will populate it with HTML skeleton using HTML5 boilerplate. Now, to make some changes, first of all, we will remove these commenters, and now we are in the script tag code block. Here we will start writing our code. Till now we have studied data types and operators in JavaScript. Data types and operators provide basic capability of a pocket calculator to the JavaScript. But what makes computer programming different is the capability of decision making. Decision making constructs enable JavaScript programs to perform different actions based on the result of a logical or comparative test condition at runtime. This means you can create test conditions in the form of expressions that evaluate to true or false. And based on these results you can perform certain actions. In JavaScript there are several conditional statements that can be used to make decisions. The first the first and the simplest one is the if statement. If statement is used to execute a block of code only if the condition specified in the statement evaluates to true. So general syntax general st syntax of a conditional statement if statement is if then condition code to execute let us understand if statement with the help of an example let us take an example where we ask users to enter temperature in centigrade and then we will be displaying a message to the user based on whether the enter temperature is valid or invalid and we say that temperature is valid if it is above zero degrees and is invalid if it is below zero degrees. So we ask user to enter temperature, then we check whether the temperature is above zero degrees, then it is valid, and we display a valid message, and if it is below zero degrees, then we display an invalid message. So we will start with, we'll define a variable where degree centigrade temperature, and here, Instead of providing a static value, we will ask user to enter the value at runtime. So for that, we can make use of prompt function. This prompt function is used to get input from the users. So inside the prompt, we can provide the message. Please 
enter temperature this prompt function by default returns the string data that is if the user enters a numeric data that will be converted to a string and that string will be provided to degree centigrade but in order to process that degree centigrade data we need to convert it into the numeric form so for that we can make use of parse in function so this parse in function takes this string the data that was entered by the user at one time and then converts it into numeric form integer form and that integer value will be provided to degree centigrade next we want to make the decision so we will make use of simple if statement if and inside the parenthesis we will provide the decision that we want to take the first decision is degree centigrade less than zero if the temperature entered by the user is less than zero then we want to display a message so this time we will make use of alert function invalid So first decision, we are checking whether the temperature entered by the user is less than zero. If it is, then we are displaying an alert that the temperature provided by the user is invalid because it is below freezing temperature. Next, we want to take another decision. And that decision is if the temperature is greater than zero, then we want to display that the entered temperature is valid. So this is a simple program where we are taking some input from the user then we are taking two decisions first decision we are checking if it is less than zero then we are displaying a alert that the enter temperature is invalid and another decision if the temperature is greater than zero then we are displaying an alert that the temperature is valid so let us save this and run it in the browser so this is the prompt and this prompt allows a user to enter some data so here we will be entering for example 50 so 50 is a valid temperature because it is above 0 degrees let us refresh the page and enter another temperature minus 20 invalid temperature below freezing temperature so this is below freezing point so this is an invalid temperature this is the simple if statement that can be used to check a condition and based on the value of that condition we can execute a block of code but since we know that either of these two statements can be true they cannot be true at same time if degree centigrade is less than zero then it cannot be greater than zero so this second statement is an alternate statement to the first one so instead of using a separate if statement for that we can make use of another if statement called if else statement the if else statement allows us to execute one block of code if the specified condition evaluates to true and another block of code if it evaluates to false the general syntax for if else statement is if condition then statements else another 
block of statements. So in if else, if the condition is true, then this block of code will be executed and if it is false, then this block of code will be executed. Let us modif modify our above program to make use of if else statement. We will comment out this and we will put this statement here. Instead of putting an another if statement, we can make use of else statement. Here if the condition is true that is degree is less than zero degree then this block this statement will be executed else means if this is false the temperature is above zero degree then this block will be executed. So this is similar to the above program but with a little cleaner code. Let us save it and see it in the browser. Please enter temperature minus 50 invalid temperature. Let us refresh it 40 degrees and this is a valid temperature. Now since we are only checking temperature that is below 0 degree but if, what if we want to check temperature that is above 100 degrees means we want to display an invalid message if the temperature is below 0 degrees and above 100 degrees. So for that we have another if statement third one that is called if else if else statement in if else if else statement we have a block of code for if statement then another block of code for if else statement but in if else we have another condition then we have else statement the general syntax for this third if else if statement is if condition then execute code else if condition to another block of code else alternate statements this means if the condition is true then this block of code will be executed else another condition is checked if this condition is true then this block of code is executed else this uh, third block of code is executed so let us implement the above program using this statement we will copy it and comment out the above statements if degree is less than zero then it is invalid another condition that we want to check is else if degree centigrade is above 100 d then again it is invalid we will display a message that invalid temperature we can write above boiling point temperature this is above boiling point temperature of the water so if it is between 0 and 100 then it is a valid temperature let us see it working in the browser let us provide some temperature 50 valid temperature minus 50 in valid temperature and now 150 which is above 100 this too is an invalid temperature so this is how we can make use of this if else if else you can provide as many else if statements as you want for example if you want 
to have some another check then you can append another else if statement and put a condition there one more change that we can use is by making use of logical operators using logical operators we can combine multiple conditional statements and instead of providing different if else if statements we can connect them with the help of logical operators for example we can make use of the or operator in the above program logical or to combine these two statements if temperature is less than zero or it is greater than 100 then we will display the same message so we can make another change to this program we will copy it comment out the above statements and here we will put if degree centigrade is less than zero or degree centigrade is greater than 100 then we want to display this message that it is invalid invalid temperature below zero or above 100 degree centigrade else this block of code will be executed so using these logical operators and or or not operator you can connect multiple uh, conditional statements complex uh, to make uh, complex conditional statements so let us check it is validity on the browser 50 valid temperature refresh minus 50 in a valid temperature it is below zero or above 100 degree centigrade 150 again invalid now let us make another change suppose in the above program we want to enter following temperatures and if the enter temperature falls in this list then it is a valid temperature and if it is outside this list then it is an invalid temperature so then we can make use of if else statement or if else if statement to check whether the enter temperature falls within this list or not but the problem is we have to enter a number of if else if statements so first we have to check if temperature is equal to 15 then we will print a block of code then else if temperature is equal to 20 else if temperature is equal to 29 else if temperature here we have to repeat the else if statement a number of times there is an efficient and alternate mechanism to handle such kinds of conditions with the help of a statement that is called a switch statement the switch statement helps us to check the value of a particular variable this time temperature for a large number of possible values here we have a number of possible values and we want to check a particular variable whether it follows within these temperatures within these values or not the general syntax for if uh, switch statement is switch keyword and then a variable expression then we have different cases case is the keyword and then the value one then 
code for value 1 and a break if we want to stop after this block of code then we have case value 2 code for value 2 break and so on finally we have a default case code for default case this default case is equivalent to the last else statement if none of the above statements or cases are matched then this default statement default case will be executed this is the general syntax of a switch statement let us rewrite the above code using this switch statement we will comment out this let us copy this and put it here here variable expression is the temperature degree centigrade temperature that we want to match with different cases case 1 is the value for case 1 is 15 means if degree centigrade is equivalent to 15 then we want to display a message document dot write valid temperature similarly second one is 20 29 we have 20 then we have third case 29 then we can add fourth case which is 45 56 56 and so on so here we will put the same message and if centigrade temperature is falling in case 15 that is equal it is equivalent to 15 then we will write valid temperature and then we will move out of this uh, case statement remember that if you won't put this break statement here then after executing this statement it will match it with 20 and then with 29 and then with 45 but what we want that if the case 15 is not matched then it should move to case 20 but if the 15 case is matched then we break we come out of this switch statement that is why we are providing this break statement and if none of these cases match then this means the temperature entered is neither 15 20 29 45 56 is then it is an invalid temperature and we can write document dot write in a valid temperature so this is how you can make use of this switch statement where you match a particular variable with many cases as many cases as you want and let us see the output in the browser enter the temperature 50 it is a valid temperature because we have already listed 50 as valid in the case statement let us provide another temperature 22 invalid temperature this is not a valid temperature <coughs> now if you see this code this statement is same for all the cases 
then why to repeat these statements in each case so if in each case you can combine multiple cases so that for multiple cases you can execute a common block of code <coughs> <coughs> so here the common block of code is this message we are repeating it in different cases so we can combine them we will write it once and delete from others we'll delete it here then here again here and in the last case we want to print it this means if the case is either 15 or 20 or 29 or 45 or 56 if any of the cases is matched then this message will be printed else this message will be printed so this is equivalent to if degree centigrade is equal to 15 or 20 or 29 or 45 or 56 then write this message otherwise write this message so let us see the output 50 it is an invalid temperature 20 is a valid temperature so this is how you can make use of this switch statement but one thing to note that while comparing this variable with these values the switch statement is making use of this equality operator triple assignment this means it is matching both the value as well as data type of this variable with these cases for example if i put quotes around this 15 this means we are matching an integer with a string but since you know that this triple equality statement will return false for that because it is matching both the value as well as data type of the variable so keep that thing in uh, mind while using this switch statement so switch statement is an alternative for if else statement there is one more alternative for an if else statement which is called a ternary operator uh, which is represented by a question mark and it takes three operands it operates on three operands the first one is a condition then a question mark and then statement for true value then a colon and statement for false value this is the general syntax of a ternary operator we have a condition then a question mark then the statement this statement is executed if the condition is true and if the condition is false then this statement will be executed or this value will be returned let us understand this with the help of an uh, example suppose we want to categorize temperature into two categories cold and hot temperature and the cold temperature is temperature that is less than 20 degree centigrade and the hot temperature is temperature that is above 20 degree centigrade so making use of this ternary operator we can easily implement this condition we can also make use of if else statement then we have to write if temperature is less than 20 then it is cold else if temperature is greater than 20 then it is hot but we can make use of a ternary operator like this we will define a where since we already have defined temperature at above place we will comment out this so we will write where k 
category is equal to then we will provide the condition condition is if the degree centigrade temperature is less than 20 then it is cold else sorry we have to put a question mark else it is hot so this is the simple syntax of a ternary operator we provide a condition which is equivalent to if centigrade degree centigrade temperature is less than 20 then this statement will be returned to category else hot will be returned to category so it acts as a simple statement or an expression then we can print it alert category let us see the result enter temperature 50 hot enter temperature 19 cold so it is returning the result so this is how to make use of this conditional or ternary operator next let us now cover the functions in javascript suppose in the above program we want to ask the user to enter temperature in fahrenheit but we want to process that temperature in degree centigrade so this means we are receiving temperature from the user in Fahrenheit degree Fahrenheit this is what the user is providing and we are processing it in degree centigrade so this means we first of all need to convert this Fahrenheit temperature into centigrade temperature for that we have a formula and you might be aware about the formula which is temperature degree centigrade temperature is equal to 5 divided by 9 multiplied by degree Fahrenheit minus 32 this is the general formula to convert a degree fahrenheit temperature into centigrade temperature 5 divided by 9 multiplied by degree fahrenheit minus 32 so we can easily implement it in the above program let us copy this back if statement from here up to this point so let us take the top variable which accepts data used from the user Cut it and put it here. Now we will comment out this statement as well. So, first we are taking data from the user temperature, which is this time in Fahrenheit. Before processing that data, we need to convert it into so we'll call it degree p 
Fahrenheit and then we will convert it into degree centigrade equal to we will use the formula 5 divided by 9 into degree Fahrenheit minus 32 this will convert the Fahrenheit temperature into centigrade and then we can proceed with our logic but suppose we are receiving this temperature from user a number of times so this is one place let us take the input again from the user and call it degree Fahrenheit 2 and this means we again need to process or convert it into the centigrade temperature so we again have to use this formula this is a small conversion formula but if the conversion formula itself uses hundreds of lines of code then using that formula five times will utilize 500 lines of code the, which will make the program very large so to handle such repetitive code block we can make use of functions <coughs> a function is a group of statement that performs specific tasks and can be kept and maintained separately from main program. Functions provide a way to create reusable code. First benefit of function is they provide a way to use reusable code. And the second is they can be maintained separately. which is easy and the third is they make debugging easy these are the benefits of functions so we can make use of these functions and we can make by making use of functions we can make our code also portable so now let us know how to define functions It is easy to define or declare a function. The general syntax for declaring a function is by making use of the keyword function, then name of function, and then we provide an optional list of parameters separated by commas. then the code block to execute and finally an optional return statement so this is the general syntax of a function we use keyword function then name of the function this name is an identifier and all the rules that apply to variable identifiers also apply to this name of the function then we have a list of parameters this is optional we can pass parameters or we can omit them if we do not pass any parameter or value to the function then we can omit this we will simply include the blank parenthesis and if we are passing some values to the function then we can write the variables for those functions separated by commas then the code block to execute that we want to execute and put in that function and then a return, return statement if we want to return some value to the calling program and this is also optional so let us write the above function using this let us write this conversion formula inside a function 
So we'll define a function. Convert to centigrade. We will provide the argument degree Fahrenheit. And then the formula that converts degree centigrade equal to 5. Let us put some variable and call it degree C so as to separate it from others. This is the formula and then we want to return this value return degree C. So now we have created a function and we can call this function to convert any fun high temperature into degree uh, temperature and as many times as we wish and want. So let us call it degree centigrade temperature equal to convert to centigrade and we will provide some value for example 50. So this will convert this 50 into the respective centigrade temperature and then we can display it. the centigrade degree centigrade let us run the program So here the centigrade equivalent of 50 is 10. So 50 degree Fahrenheit is equivalent to 10 degree centigrade. Similarly you can call it for some another value. We can call it any wire. So you can call it as many times as you wish and want. So this is how you can make use of functions. Now, now another if suppose uh, the user does not provide any value to the function then we can make use of default arguments so what is a default default means the value used in absence of an external supplied value so if we are expecting some value from the user and the user is unable to provide that value then we can make use of some default value to process it this capability was not available until ECMAScript 6 this has been added in the ECMAScript 6 this capability and we can specify values to the function parameters so for example let's define a function greeting I have defined a function greeting which is taking a parameter for example name I want to greet some person but if the user does not provide his name then we can make use of a default name for example guest this is the way how we can define a default value for a variable so name is the parameter or name of the variable and this equal to guest is the default value if the user does not supply any value to name then this guest will be used so then we can display a message hello and name Let us call this function with some name greeting. Here I have supplied the parameter. So instead of this guest, 
the value that I have supplied will be used and it will display hello Iqbal. Let us first comment out above code. Let us move to browser. Hello Iqbal. Now if I omit the parameter this time I am not providing any value to this name so this means it will make use of this default value guest so this time I should get hello guest so here is hello guest these are the default functional parameters now let us move to the topic of variable scope The scope of a variable determines the extent of variable's availability within the program. That is the portion of the program where the variable will be available. In other words, we can say that scope delimits the area where a variable can be used or accessed. In JavaScript, we have two kinds of scopes. Local scope, global scope. By default, variables declared within a function have local scope. That means they can be viewed or manipulated from outside of that function. So we cannot, we can't access or view them outside the function. For example, let us create a function. I have declared a function greeting and inside this greeting we I have declared a variable message and initialized it to hello world now this variable has been declared inside this function so this means this var variable will be having a local scope it can be accessed only within this function I cannot access it outside for example if I call this function greeting I will get the alert message hello world but if i try to access this message variable outside this function then it will show an error since it cannot reference this variable it is uh, of local scope let us see the result but i'm getting nothing let us see the developer tools so it is showing uncaught reference error message is not defined so I am unable to access this message variable outside I am unable to access this message variable outside this function that is called a local scope it is having a local scope however any variable declared in a program outside of a function has global scope That means if I declare a variable outside this, for example, where message I am with global scope. Now I can access this variable anywhere in the program. Even I can access it before it has been declared. That we will be covering soon. So this means it is having a global scope.
I can access it. I can print alert message two. Let us comment out this one. So I am accessing this variable message to anywhere in the program. This is called global scope. Let us now move to our final topic that is where versus let keywords. Till now we have been using where keyword to declare different kinds of variables but there is another variable that is let that can be used to declare variables first this let was added in ECMAScript 6 it won't be available before ECMAScript uh, 6 if you are working on ECMAScript 5 or previous versions then you won't be able to use this let keyword now the difference there are two critical differences between where and let the first one is regarding scope where is having local scope within its function means we can say that where are function scoped and let they are having block scope means they are available within the block in which they have been declared second difference is that of hoisting Hoisting means moving. In case of where keywords, where now variables declared with where keyword are hoisted to the top within the scope. What does that mean? I will explain it in just a few, just a moment, and in case of let not hoisted it is hoisted so let us understand these with the help of examples first scope so let us take an example let us declare a for loop for this is a simple for loop which will print the numbers from 0 to 5 now I have declared this variable I inside this for loop this means it will be having a block scope it will be available within this block so if I try to access it outside this block document dot write i i will get an exception so let us see the result 0 1 2 3 4 and if we press ctrl shift i we get an error a reference error i is not defined because i have accessed this i outside it is block scope that is what is the meaning of block scope now let us define same with the help of a where keyword where i equal to 0 i less than 5 document 
and now if I try to access this let's comment out this let us see the result 0 1 2 3 4 and the fifth one is the result of this let us put a break before this value so here this file is the value that I have accessed outside this for loop so this means it is having a function scope it will be available within that function or the code block in which it in uh, outside that code block in which it has been declared that is the difference the first difference of scope second difference is that of hoisting hoisting means moving variables or functions to the top of the scope so for example let us see the function hoisting let us declare a function here I have declared a function at line number 225 now let us call it at 215 normally this shouldn't work because I have declared it uh, in the later code but in JavaScript functions are hoisted that is they are moved to the top of the scope so the scope of this function is <coughs> within the script so it will be moved to the top of that script I can access is access it anywhere in the script let us see the result hello world I have been able to access this before it is declaration this is called function hoisting now let us see what is the meaning of variable hoisting let us declare a variable var and initialize it somewhere above now we can call it alert my var now what I have done I have declared a variable at line number 235 but I have initialized it at 230 and I have used it at 232 so I have used this variable before it is declaration let us see the result move to this my hoisted variable so this means I have been able to access this variable before it is declaration but remember one thing in JavaScript only initialize declaration is hoisted not initialization so what does that mean we can only only the variable declaration is hoisted uh, that is moved to the top not it is initialization for example if I initialize this variable with some variable and then I try to access it before it is declaration and initialization this will throw an error it will show an undefined variable because only the variable declaration is hoisted or moved to the top not the initialization we have to initialize it before using that variable so this will show an error undefined so this is called variable hoisting and in case of where keyword this hoisting is possible but in case of let keyword we cannot have hoisting or moving up of variables so here we have hoisted this my variable so this was working correctly but if we make use of let keyword in case of let keyword neither there is declaration hoisting nor initialization hoisting so we cannot use this variable before it is declaration even if we initialize it let us see the result so there is an error let us see the error Control shift i and we will show that cannot access my where before initialization so this is the another difference between 
where and let keyword so the first difference is the, of their scope where keyword is function scope and the let keyword is block scope the second difference is where keyword in case of where keyword we have hoisting that is declaration is hoisted to the top of its scope and in case of let keyword there is no hoisting so this was the main difference these were the main differences between where and let keyword thanks for watching this lecture uh, see you soon in another javascript tutorial